So you've been asking for it, and it's finally here. What's here? Well, I'm glad you asked, Steve. Wireless printing for the new Chichu Systems motherboard. This means on your Saturn IV Ultra, Mars V Ultra, or Revo, you can now wirelessly send your prints to your printers. To your printers. And what's even better is that you can actually send them after you've sliced them. But that's not all we've added to the new version of Lychee Slicer 7.1. We've added a lot more features, which I'm about to cover over in this video right now. So let's get, let's get to it. So first, let's talk about what's new. What's new is a couple new printers being the Anycubic Mono M7 and the Anycubic Mono M4. And as I spoke about earlier, we've added the new Chichu Systems protocol. So now we can support the uh, wireless systems for any new uh, printer that comes with a, the newer Chichu Box motherboard. So if you click on 3D printer and then go to the printer with the Wi-Fi, click on the gear right here, right here under Ethernet and Wi-Fi. This is where you can connect it to the 3D printer. It's also where you can upload a file. So if you click on this thing right here, it'll pop up the menu, and then I can directly select the pre-sliced file and send it to the printer. And you can even choose the option just to upload it or to upload and print. Now, for those who don't know, fast slicing is in beta right now in Lychee Slicer. Fast slicing is where we use your CPU instead of your GPU to do much faster slicing than we have in the past. But traditionally, it's only been available for .ctb formats. We've now opened that up to .gu and .prz for the Elgu or Frozen printers, respectively. We've also addressed some of the issues with artifacts with the fast slicing. At this point, I would say fast slicing is very, very close to being out of beta and possibly the next update. The next enhancement is for batch processing. Traditionally, batch processing, you could only uh, apply it to a bunch of files on your computer. Now you can apply it directly to the files in your scene. If you click on batch, you have the option between file and scene. If the scene, if there's something I don't want to apply the batch system to, let's say this one over on the side, if I just select it and hit V, or under the objects menu, just unclick the eye and that will hide it, it won't be applied to the batch system. And under here, under scene, you can see all the options you have here. If you just click on run batch, it'll then run all these options against any file that's on the scene that's visible, and then you can export and save them as you wish. Now this one's pretty exciting. We can support bamboo printers, and we can support exporting in .3MF. If you know what that means, you've got some exciting times for you with Lychee Slicer, being able to do some pretty cool stuff with the bamboo printers. This is going to make better integration with things like the uh, thumbnail management calibration and accurate print times, estimates, and weights. Now here's one that a lot of users have really been waiting for. This is where you can select an object in Lychee Slicer right in your scene, and you can export it down to its own .lys or .lyt file. This way you can break apart your scenes without having to well, go through a rather unfriendly process. This should really help out for those who have lots of files in a single scene and want to split them up. I am I'm one of those people, so I'm kind of excited about that one. So you can see here I have the Saturn IV Ultra build plate, and it's just a little bit too small to fit this entire dragon. And let's say I wanted to export them to their own scene. All I have to do is select the object I want to export, go over to File, and then go to Export As, and then go to Selection as New Lychee Scene. You can see there's a three there. I've got three objects selected, and so three objects are going to be saved into a new Lychee Scene. There's one new shortcut we've added, and that's Shift Tab. If you hit Shift Tab, it's going to hide the interface. This can be really helpful for uh, streamers creating content, or even if you feel like the interface is kind of getting in the way when you're doing supports, you can just hide it with a quick command. Again, that shift tab. That's the end of the things we've added. Let's talk about the things we've improved. So one thing is save as menu. We've kind of just simplified the save as menu. Now when you go to save as, you're going to have .lys and .lyt. That's it. The other options have been removed as there's really no need for them. These two options are amazing. If you're not sure the difference between the two, .lys saves the models in the scene with the file. .lyt always refers to the .stl or you know the original file. I would use .lyt if you have large scenes, a lot of files, let's say you do a lot of pre-supports and have it always point back to the original file. That's generally the best for those, but for people like me who don't do that, I mostly save everything in the .lys as a nice little contained package. The next thing that we've done is we've altered the way that the Saturn IV and Mars V uh, looks in Lychee Slicer. If you don't know, those printers have the VAT that drops and the build arm doesn't go up every single time. And what we did have is we had all the settings like the original Saturn III Ultra or any other Choo Choo Box Systems printer. So that's been updated to where it's only the relevant settings that apply to those printers going forward. Here's another one that has gotten a lot of requests. The Improved Planar Cut Tool. 
Planar Planar Cut, the improved Planar Cut tool. Now you can use the Interface Lunchy Slicer to uh, very accurately position it up, down, or rotate it so you can get really precise cuts. Also before there was a graphical glitch where sometimes that would get expanded really big, it was really hard to tell where the cut was going to be. Now you're gonna see exactly where you're gonna cut the object before you do it. And if you haven't used the cut tool, it says a really cool feature where first you position it on your model where you want it to go, then you get to select the cuts that you want to cut. You don't have to slice everywhere that the slicing tool makes contact, and then it'll break that object up into multiple individual objects. We've relocated the Arrange All tool. Now it's just under Move, and it's there's two places on the left bar and on the right bar. Much easier to find, so you can just get all of your models, hit Arrange All, and get going. We've made a small adjustment to the custom bracing settings. We've increased the maximum value for the bottom start and the gap of the bracings up to 30 millimeters. This can change uh, how far up before the bracings start to generate on any given model. To take advantage of the new bracing preset, just click on any bracing, click on the gear next to it, hit edit. And from here, you can set the gap. Now this gap is going to be in between bracing, anywhere from zero to 30 millimeters, and the bottom start. This is gonna be how far before the very first bracing begins. I like to do about four and 10. I think that's the best setting for at least taller objects. From there, you just click on save and apply and you're done. For me, I don't like to start bracing up until beyond 10 millimeters, but that's just me. Um, you know, do what you like. We've improved the folder suggestion when you're importing or exporting files. Lightshade like Slicer will now remember where you left off. So when you open it up, it's always gonna open up where you left off on either activity. We've also made it so that the gradient overview found under the gear in the top right can now be turned on, off, set as checkerboard or gradient, and it's available on the layout, preview, and export scenes. To finish up, let's talk about things that we've fixed. I've already mentioned that we fixed the geometry issues with fast slicing. We also fixed an issue with Vox Lab printers. Those will work great with Lychee Slicer now. And the last thing is we fixed some of the batch tool functionality with suffixes and prefixes. Also, we addressed an issue where you had to select the output file on every single file. This should streamline the process, saving you quite a bit of time. And that's it for this one. Of course, we're gonna keep doing updates like this. We really wanna make Lightshade Slicer as best as we can. And if there's anything that we missed, make sure to head over to the Lightshade Slicer Discord and let me know if you haven't already, because as you know, I absolutely love hearing your feedback and complaints about Lightshade Slicer all day, every night, on the weekends, and on the holidays, and always, forever. Definitely. <laughs> no, I really do. They're great. They help us really understand which ones we should work on, which ones are affecting our customers the most, versus which ones you know are affecting us least. We have only so many man hours we can spend on these kind of things. We really wanna make sure we are focusing on the right things that affect the most customers, or at least affect you the most that cause you the biggest heartache. Our goal here really is to make Lightshade Slicer the best slicer on the planet. And with your help, I'm pretty sure we can do it. Now, being a bit of an engineer myself, I'm always a big fan of these It's Fix type updates. If you'd like to see more of these, let us know in the comments below. Also remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as our other social media and join us on our Lychee Slicer Discord if you have any more questions. Thank you for watching and have a good day.